Hello beautiful souls and future vegan mommies or those curious in womb lore. Welcome to my vegan mommy vlog where I share with you my journey up to conception and beyond. Today's video we will dive deeply into the spiritual reunification with our womb and our final menstrual cycle before conception. So I'm going to dive into this a little bit more like a vlog, very spiritual, very esoteric. It's going to feel more like a lecture. So I would just get ready, tune in, pause the video if you'd like to come back to it when you have more time, or pause the video to make a beautiful cup of tea if you'd like, or to just get centered or even lie down. Just get comfortable and let's talk about womb lore. Let's talk about our divine feminine principle. Let's talk about our menstrual blood. Let's talk about what it means to bleed one last time before a conception, okay? So before we begin, I'd like to share with you a quote I got from the Womb Awakening book. I've put on all my menstrual videos so far, and it's called, it says, your blood is gold, your womb is sacred, you are the chalice of life. And I really love that. Going back to my ayahuasca journey in September of 2022, I was told by ayahuasca to read the Womb Awakening book. And I think... Part of my gifts on this planet, which I've come to know, is that I like to get information and then share it. So I'm kind of like a teacher, but I don't really identify myself as a teacher. I'm maybe I'm not always so cohesive or succinct when I'm teaching or when I'm sharing information, but I know that that's part of my gift is to receive something and then share it. I also know another part of my gift, which I thought might have been bad for a long time, is that I talk a lot. Or that I always want to be talking. I always want to be looked at or seen or not acknowledged. And I think I realized instead of like being upset about that is knowing that, oh, that's because I want to share what's going on. And the reason I say like, instead of being upset is because like I was super vocal about being vegan. I'd be like, F you, you got dead animals in your part, blah. But you know, sometimes like that aggressive nature that I would project onto someone could have been what they needed as a seed. Because most of what I do is I give the energy that I'm feeling, I give it back to the person that I'm around. So then I start to recognize like, oh, why am I being this way? Because I'm receiving that energy from someone else and I'm reflecting it back. So I'm, I'm learning how to transmute energies as well and understanding what my personal energy is and then what someone else's energy is. That's another, I would say, gift that I have. And everyone has these spiritual gifts. Everyone has these gifts that they can... Um, see things or hear things or feel things or know things or just do things like they can be very athletically gifted or they can sing and be gifted or they can act or whatever it is um, perform surgeries things like that so I think mine is sort of I'm sort of finding it in this path of like shamanic healing but I'm going to share with you the information that I found with Womb Awakening and with my own personal journey up to conception so I am menstruating right now this is my last um, menstrual cycle before I am trying, before I conceive. Let's put it that way. We're going to manifest, we're going to use our words for good, right? So we don't say I'm trying or I failed or I can't or I should. We say that I can, I am. So I am conceiving in July. It being July, this is my final period. I am counting down the days till I ovulate. It's like so emotional, isn't it? Um, it's like been such a journey for me because like, I was so opposed to having children and now it's been like this awakening, this like experience of divine bliss and the divine feminine coming to me and saying, your womb is powerful, you are a creator and it's time to bring in this, bring in this soul that has chosen you to be their mommy. And anyway, it's coming down to the wire, it's a full moon um, and we're going to be conceiving like a couple days after the full moon. So I'm gonna have this beautiful ritual tonight for my final bleed um and if you've sat with me before in my other videos you know that i use a sustainable um eco-friendly non-toxic menstrual cup and um, i'm wearing one now as well i'm showing you my favorite which is the lunette cup i really do appreciate this cup i like the thickness of it it absorbs very well it secures very well um but because it is going to collect my sacred blood, I'm going to give it back to Mother Earth under this beautiful full moon. Of course, I'm emotional because you bleed when, when you're in your period, you get really emotional, right? And that's 
because you are, you store a lot of energy in your lower energy centers in your womb. So in your root, your sacral and your solar plexus ch chakras, and you're storing that energy there. And this is a beautiful gift of menstruating because you're allowing yourself to let go of what no longer serves you. And when you cry, you're also purging a form of energy that's no longer serving you and you're letting it be removed from your being and from your energy centers. Um, so that being said, our blood is powerful. It says here in this book that like science shows that menstrual fluid contains 1000 proteins that are biologically active and 385 unique proteins found only in menstrual blood, menstrual fluid. Um, the number does not include the hormones, neurotransmitters, and other kinds of bioactive and psychoactive substances that gives, um, that creates life, essentially. Um, so when we have an egg that's getting fertilized in our womb space, this intelligent blood fuels this baby, creates the placenta, creates the baby, creates this life within us. And that's so powerful. So as we're releasing our last menstrual cycle before we conceive, we're releasing this blood, but knowing how powerful it is, the potentiality of it, the stem cells that are in it, and the connection that we have to our womb grid of Mother Gaia. And in order to connect to that, as we bleed, we must connect with this idea that that we are goddesses, that we are these profound creators, we are magical beings, and not to hold any ill thoughts or disdain towards our blood, um, but to honor it. So tonight, um, I'm going to engage in a ceremony space where under the full moon, I will take the blood that I have now put in my container. Oh, it's in the bathroom because I'm already using it. <laughs> but I put my blood into the container and mix it with water. And under the full moon, I will um, cast a circle around me using light and calling in the directions and um, then giving my blood back to Mother Earth and really grounding myself, getting into a root-centered meditation where I connect with Mother Gaia and give back my blood to Mother Gaia. And asking too, asking the divine source, asking Mama Gaia, for guidance, for ease, for grace, for love. As we move, my husband and I move into this sacred dance, this sacred union of conception, um, of my intelligent egg seeking his most perfect seed. <laughs> Do not mess up. Okay. So um, in order to call in this sacred divine rose energy of the Magdalens, the Magdalene priestesses of Mary, of the mermaid legends of womb lore, I use rose water because rose water is an opportunity to ignite the senses, which breaks the blood brain barrier in the brain and kind of like triggers an alchemical response to then thus enter into the womb space as well and sort of heighten the ceremonial aspect of connecting deeper with your womb, connecting deeper with Mother Earth, releasing the blood, and then, and then recognizing as you fully finish your menstrual cycle that now you're rebuilding on um, a premise of love, your, or a foundation of love. You're, you're rebuilding your uterine wall and your womb space to house and prepare to house this beautiful soul that you are calling in and that has chosen you to be their mommy. Um, so rose water, shake, 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 shake. And what's, what's nice is um, you can put it on your face without having any issues. Like it's, um, you can put it on your face, basically. You can also use a couple different rose waters that are for uh, skin so that it's safe, but you can always just spray your face if you want <laughs> And you can breathe in that smell or you can just spray your hands rub it in Scent it bring it in And just sort of let it wash over you and imagining like this veil of cascading water of rose and divine feminine 
energy is just cascading all around you and circling you and enveloping you with love and compassion. You can also spray it directly to your womb three times as a beautiful number um, and rubbing your womb in a uh, clockwise motion and just honoring the space. Like right now I have my, uh, pain, like, you know, not pain, but you can just feel it because your uterine lining is coming out and, and you're dissolving, right? It's dissolving back into nothingness yet everything. And when you give your blood to water and it's connecting with that divine matrix, that, that really intelligent, water is very intelligent. It is the blood of mother earth. So when we connect, combine our blood with the blood of mother earth. So our menstrual fluid, our menstrual blood with water, and we give it back to the soil. We give it back to mother earth. We're really channeling and connecting a deep, deep, profound, like holy grail, I guess, of love with mother earth. And you're bringing in this divine, knowing this divine wisdom, this divine love, and you're connecting with your ancestors of earth. You're connecting with the ancestors that you have had in your past that are now a part of earth. And all of it is just this beautiful, sacred dance. And so therefore, that's why I like to call in rose water because it's igniting my brain, but also connecting like this cosmic masculine energy into the divine a surrendering fluid feminine energy and connecting our blood with Mother Earth's blood, which is water into the earth, connecting our womb with the womb of Earth. So our blood is gold. Our blood is intelligent. It is, so that being said, okay, let's, let's backtrack. Because we're going to be calling in a new soul, our fertile window occurs after our period ends. We have a fertile window of five to seven days, three to seven days. It really depends on your body. I can't say for you. I can't speak for you. But we have that fertile window. And right now we're in experiencing our menstrual flow. So as we're releasing our blood and we're connecting with Mother Earth under this full moon, we're also releasing what no longer serves us, what traumas, what negative attributes that we don't like or that have attached to us, any energies that have attached to us that don't serve us, any beliefs about ourselves that don't serve us. And we're using this time, this final purging of our blood to purge ourselves of anything that would hold a dense negative energy within our womb and our lower chakra energy centers area. Like we're clearing that space. We're clearing that space so it will be a vessel of love that we can bring in this new soul to house this growing baby in an environment that is literally of love. That way, when, when we are purging all this crap, all this negative negativity, negative thought forms, negative beliefs, traumas that have happened to us directly or in our family line, and we're releasing it consciously and we're saying, this doesn't serve us. We are actively letting it go. I consciously and intentionally let this go. And I see it for what it is and I let it go so that when you are, so you can rise above any genetic predisposition to anything negative that you might have had in your life. You can rise above um, a genetic expression that is of a negative nature, okay, in our minds as we would label it as negative. And what we do is by eating healthy and clean foods and not only that, we're consuming things like mentally that is clean and harmonic and vibrating at a higher frequency. And we are giving ourselves, providing ourselves, nourishing ourselves with thoughts of love and bliss and peace and acceptance and fearlessness. We are rising above any genetic expression that might be negative in nature. It's called epigenetics. Bruce Lipton talks about that. Um, this book, Womb Awakening, Dr. Saren, I'm sorry, Azra Bertrand talks about it. So it's, um, yeah, in the Womb Awakening. <laughs> uh, and more than that, lots of people talk about it. Um, it's, it's like, if, for example, if you, if you were to take cells, healthy cells from someone's body and put them in different Petri dishes, um, they're cells from one person's body, they're all identical, but you put them in different Petri dishes and you change the environment of those said Petri dishes, 
you will see how the cell will react and how the cell will function. If you put a, a cell in a petri dish with an environment that's not conducive to healthy lifestyle, healthy um, ways of being, thinking, acting, feeding yourself, etc., you can invite in diseases, you can invite in cancer, you can invite in pains, de um, degenerative tissues, um, mental disorders, things like that, because your your vibration, your thoughts, your your environment around you, your environment inside you all influences your genetic expression. So that science, if you can take this time with your menstrual cycle to release all that doesn't serve you, to come into wholeness, to come into perfect stillness, you will find that you are then rising above any genetic you are potentially, okay, I'm not going to say for sure, but you are potentially rising above any um, genetic expression that could be negative in nature, okay? So that's what is so beautiful about our final menstrual flow is releasing all that no longer serves us. To invite in smells that are divine, that ignite this passion within your mind so that you're all connected, mind, body, and spirit. And under the full moon, I'm planting seeds of creation, of love, for love, for my little emerald that's coming into my body and into my, my soul as we connect together. And this is, you know, we are cre creators. So we want to create heaven on earth. So we want to create an environment for which our baby will blossom in, an, in a heaven-like environment. So we're mindful, we're in flow, we allow ourselves to rest, we allow ourselves to be creative, and we connect deeper with Mother Earth. And we can learn from nature. We can learn from how everything interacts and co-creates. So because this is our final menstrual cycle, and it is a full moon, and it will be that my husband and I conceive this week, um, Again, positive manifestation, positive words, right? Positive affirmations. I will take my menstrual cup with my final flow. I've been doing it this whole flow. I mean, I always do it every day, but taking this blood that's within me, connecting it with the blood of Mother Earth, the water, and creating a circle of light around me, calling in the directions, calling in my ancestors, calling in my future baby soul and being like, listen, I'm so excited to embark on this journey. I'm so excited to have you inside my womb space as I create space for you to create a harmonic, balanced, loving, heaven, heavenly womb space for you. I release what no longer serves me. I release my attachments to what no longer serve me. And in my own personal ceremony, I will be very specific. But if you can't be specific about what you're releasing, just simply say, I release what no longer serves me. And you're in your safety net. You're in your safety circle. You've called in the directions. You've called in Mother Eagle Spirit from the East, land of the rising sun. You call in this Eagle Spirit asking to be carried on the wings of grace, to see everything from a higher perspective. You're calling in the spirit of the South, of Sasha Mama, of the serpent spirit, releasing all that doesn't serve you, shedding your uterine lining, is shedding all of that that doesn't serve you, the way a snake sheds her skin. And you're calling in the jaguar spirit of the West, you're calling in this agile cat, this feminine feline energy to protect you with ease and agility through the darkness with fearlessness and you know the fear that you have around conception around having a baby around all of that you're you're, you're purging it you're releasing it and you're calling in your ancestors you're calling in the jaguar spirit of the west to walk with you in fearlessness calling in the spirit of the hummingbird from the north calling in that spirit to allow you to embark on this beautiful new journey and to drink only from the sweet nectar of life. You're calling in Father Sky, Grandmother Moon, and all the star nations, all the angels. You're calling them in to bear witness to this beautiful transformation, this purging of energy, and this release of negativity, and bringing in this light energy to create a sacred space for your soul. And you're calling in your soul. You're inviting her in, you know? Not yet, though. That's when you start to conceive. But you're like, look at what I'm doing for you. This is for you. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to conceive you this week. 
and then you call in Mother Earth and you ground yourself and you feel roots spreading out from the soles of your feet, spreading down from your Cossack's bone and your root chakra, coming out of your yoni, these roots coming into the earth and connecting with earth as you connect your blood and her blood together to create harmony and balance and ease and grace and to connect with your divine feminine, to connect with that deep, deep love. You're all there together, all right now, as you give your blood to Mother Earth, releasing, purging, cleansing, and then inviting whatever energies Mother Earth has for you that are beautiful, high vibration, powerful, up through your roots and into your yoni and into your uterus and into your ovaries, calling in that energy in as you continue to shed what no longer serves you under the light of the full moon, for me at least tonight. And that's just what it's going to be. That's just how beautiful it's going to be. And you're allowing this code of creation to be written inside you. And that's what I'm going to do. So I hope that, you know, you can find some sort of appreciation for your last menstrual cycle and find some sort of ritual or ceremony to engage in as you release this blood from your from your previous like body preparing for pregnancy and it's releasing it all. It's releasing this energy that might be stuck in your lower chakra centers and, and then inviting this beautiful energy in as you completely purge your period and uh, your womb blood, as you start to regrow your uterine lining and prepare to birth in your new soul um, and your fertile window in the next few days to come. So thank you for joining me on this beautiful sacred journey. You are a beautiful creator. You are a divine feminine goddess. And that is something to honor, to love. Your menstrual blood is something that is a gift every single month that you are able to have this gift of renewal. And you know that your blood is full of so much powerful nutrients and nourishment. What it's meant to nourish the placenta and nourish the baby it will then nourish your plants when you give your blood to Mother Earth, to your plants. And in my other videos, you will learn that when you give blood to your house plants and you mix your blood with water, it doesn't smell. You don't smell it. it um, and your plants love it. So don't worry about that. It's a very clean process. It's natural, okay? And that's what this blog, blog is all about. It's about being natural. It's about tuning into your sacred femininity. It's about tuning into your womb. It's about tuning into the harmony with Mother Earth and being sustainable and non-toxic and natural, as natural as we can be, you know? But anyway, I hope this video helps you and I really would love for you to share this with anyone you think might benefit from it benefiting from this sisterhood, this motherhood, this divine goddess nature that we're, we are, you know, rise up into your power. You are beautiful. You are worthy. Excuse me. You are love. That's a purging of energy. Mm -hmm. It is. When you burp or fart, it is a purging of energy. I learned that when I was with shamans and sacred plant medicine. And obviously when, you know, you're in your period, your body does what it wants to do because it's moving energy. And that's what's beautiful. You are moving energy. That's what your period is about. That's what your moon cycle is about. So allow that energy to be released in a beautiful, loving way. Love yourself. You're creating space. And good luck to you. Um, so tonight I will engage in my ritual and in a few days my fertile window will happen and my husband and I will engage in sacred ceremony to call in our child's soul. It's so fascinating. I can't believe it. I love it. And I'm sending you tons and tons of love. So give me a comment if you like this video or if you, if you engage in any sacred ceremony and how you treat your period. I'd love to hear. And if you are going to do any full moon ceremony or any menstrual ceremony before you conceive on your last menstrual cycle, after your last menstrual cycle. All right. Um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. I'll see you on the next one if it's stuck and I'm pregnant. Let's chant Namo and then we'll end the video. Aligning our left and right hemispheres, taking a deep breath in through the womb, through the nose. Namo.